The Red Hawks win 10-9. Thanks for your patience. And the skipper, Doug Seminick, is down below. And Doug, sorry for all the delays here, but congratulations on a walk-off win the second time this homestand. And how about, first of all, just the way your team, after falling behind 8-3, to three, found a way to come back and win it? Well, I mean, 5-3 to three in the fifth inning. I mean, you don't feel great about yourself. So, But, you know, we persevered. We pecked away a little bit. We got some base runners. Got a fourth run, sort of ignited it a little bit. Got a clutch two-out single from Brack Holt to make it 8-7. Went back out, gave one up, and then went back out and, you know, kind of stole the show here at the end of the game. Jackson's a bat against a very good closer. Was real clutch from a great, a good hitter. I mean, he can do things. He has the, the flair for that, you know, to do it, tie it up, or give us the lead. So it was pretty good on how he went about it. And, uh, and it was good. I don't have a pen, pal. <laughs> <laughs> so. Youngster wants Simi to sign one of the team photos from today. That was team photo giveaway. Yeah, and, and Douglas, I guess it's hard to define that type of a player. The reigning league player of the year, Nick Jackson, just the flair for the dramatic, huh? Yeah, I mean, he knows how to look for something in a certain situation. He knows what the situation is, is all about, and he produces in it now. You know, we've seen this team a lot over the last couple of weeks, so... They were starting to get comfortable with our bullpen. We're getting comfortable against their bullpen. I mean, Kennedy came out over there, and he was pretty good against us. And then he comes up here, and it's a little different. So, I mean, it's tough. It's tough to see the same guys over and over and over and over and over. Pretty soon the hitter's going to get the advantage. And kind of the scoreboard indicates that with 13, with 24 hits. So, um, good for us. We needed it because St. Paul was winning, and we need to keep our, our attack on them going in the right direction. Mitch Anderson then came up with the bases loaded and one out, and Sioux City actually brought five men in to play the infield and just two in the outfield, so Stan Clyburn playing the percentages, I guess, and rolling the dice, and how about Anderson's swing to get you the game winner? Well, I mean, he's a seasoned guy, so, you know, the guy went upstairs on him a couple times. He fouled him back in the net. I, didn't, I thought the guy may drop a slider on him. I'm not sure what it was. And I think he tried to go up there one more time, and Mitch got on top of it and got on it. So, you know, he's, he knows what to do. He's pretty smart. He knew to keep the ball off the ground there with five infielders. But he was a little riled up, man. He wanted to get it done right there and rolls over on a ball. So, you know, just the season, I think the experience, and I think the smarts of the hitter prevailed there. But like I said, he's really, he's really had the wear on his two top guys in his bullpen. And you can see today, he gave this guy a five-out save a couple nights ago, Bodish Ball. Mm -hmm. He tried to squeeze in a four-out save there. And, you know, these guys are probably hanging a hair because they're playing some closely te contested games. And, you know, he wants to win them. They're a good, good team. They're very scrappy. Mm -hmm. They're very solid. They make the plays in the field. Probably don't pitch right where they want to be. But they're hard to get out. They're, you know, they're going to they're going to have a difference in this what we're doing in this race amongst the teams they're playing. I know they got some games left. I think with Winnipeg, and I'm pretty sure I'm not sure it was St. Paul, but mm -hmm. they're going to be hard to deal with down the stretch. I'm glad we're over with them. Yeah, he won seven out of the eleven between the two. Doug, before I let you go, I have to ask you: Before Thursday, the Red Hawks had not won a game when trailing after seven innings. Now you've done it twice in four days. How much confidence does that give this team moving forward here for the final thirty plus games of the season? I think it just shows you the character of the team and what it builds as you move on through a season and you know that never say never maybe is starting to be something that these guys believe in I just sit there on the bench just like these fans sit in the stands and just listen and watch a little bit and they're they're all into their game they're all into talking about what the guy's trying to do to get them out there's a lot of conversation going on they're very good players so um, if you can pay attention and I know it doesn't cost anything to pay attention <laughs> but if you can pay attention a little bit and just follow what's going on, a lot of good things can happen when it's your turn. Congratulations, Doug. Thanks again for the patience. Good luck right. in St. Paul starting on Tuesday. Doug, if you can give that to Mitch Anderson, we'll talk to him real quick before we wrap things up. And the skipper is going to sign some team photos down below. And I think he's going to bring Mitch Anderson over. And Mitch is doing the same thing right now, autographing a couple of team photos down on the field. Mitch Anderson had a double and then the walk-off game-winning single in the bottom of the ninth inning today to give the Red Hawks 
a 10 to 9 comfort behind win up the record to 42 and 26 and they needed it too because St. Paul got the job done with a win today over Gary South Shore at Midway Stadium and those two teams the Red Hawks and the Saints will meet head on at Midway Stadium starting Tuesday night and the hero of today's ninth inning rally, Mitch Enerson, joins us. Mitch, congratulations. I tell you, all kinds of pressure, I'm sure, when you walked into the batter's box. What were you thinking? You had that infield full of defenders, five different players playing in the infield, a tough right-hander, Chris Bodishbaugh, out on the mound. What was going through your mind? Just don't hit it on the ground is, is pretty much what I was thinking about. There's no holes anywhere in the infield. and So I got a pitch up and got lucky, got the barrel to it. And how did Bodespaugh handle you early in the bat? You were able to foul off a couple of pitches. Were they fastballs? And what did you get on the game winner? Oh, Bodespaugh is, a, is a, can, you know, he's going to go after you. He wants to try to get you out. So I didn't think he was going to try to get fancy with sliders or anything. I knew he was going to come right at me. And I don't, just trying to catch up to it at your, you know, in his chest size, not the easiest thing. Mm, absolutely not. And Doug Simonick just pointed this out, Mitch. You've been around the game for a long time. You're a veteran in this American Association. How much did that experience help you when you stepped in? Because this isn't the first time you've been in that situation. No, I'm not the first time, but it's one of the few times you get to succeed in that situation. But uh, I've, I've gotten a chance to face Botus Bob for the last three seasons. So I've, you know, I've gotten to see him a few times. You've been swinging the bat really well over the last couple of weeks, and you and I had lunch down in Sioux City less than two weeks ago. What's been the difference lately? Just relaxing and, and you know, having fun and playing the game that's supposed to be played, not trying to do too much. Hmm. And Mitch, when you rounded first, you were mobbed by your teammates, and I saw that they had the big Gatorade bucket out there. Did they get you? You don't look like you're wet right now. Yeah, my whole backside is soaked right now. <laughs> they got me pretty good. I think I think King got the brunt of it though. He did. Who 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 was the instigator? Was it Pin Praise? I had no idea. I was on the ground trying to get back up, so I have no idea. <laughs> One last thing from Mitch Enderson here in the post game show. Mitch, what does this mean for the Red Hawks? Two come from behind wins, walk off wins in the last four days. What does this do for the ball club? I mean, I, I think it just reiterates that we're a tough team to beat, whether we're losing or winning or, you know, just not having a good game. Everybody picks each other up, and uh, I have a feeling it's just going to, the momentum's just going to keep going. I'm really happy for your success. Thanks a lot, Mitch, and good luck in St. Paul starting on Tuesday. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, Mitch Anderson, Red Hawk left fielder. He is the hero today, and the Red Hawks had plenty of them. They don't win this game without the Nick Jackson solo homer to right in the ninth inning. They certainly don't win the game without Keith Brack.